G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags and welcome aboard the Skipjack Nuclear Attack Submarine and today we are doing a little bit of a 1v1. So the mission briefing for this one is somewhere around here out at 290, we don't know exactly where but somewhere in that direction at least, there is an enemy submarine. Now I don't know what this enemy submarine is but it is either a Victor class, a Sierra class or an Alpha class. All of the uh, the Russian diesels have been taken out of the equation here. So it's one of the top submarines. Get some moss in place. Now we're driving the refit skipjack. We've got a 700 foot crush depth, or 700 foot test depth rather. 30 knots maximum speed, but we do about 148 decibels when we're rounded up. We should be reasonably good on this heading with a tote array. Um, yeah, we're noisy, and we only have one wire, so we can only carry guidance on one torpedo. So my old trick of firing, you know, multiple torpedoes under wire guidance and creating a sensor net using the torpedoes isn't actually going to work here. We can only guide one torpedo at any given time. So I'm hoping we're only actually going to use one, and that's what this is about. Now, difficulty level, we are playing on Elite. Um, I've seen this pop up in the comment section a couple of times. I only ever play on realistic or elite guys. Generally, when I'm driving an American submarine, I'm an elite. When I'm driving a Russian submarine, I drop it back to realistic. And that's because the way the, uh, the game plays, the difference between realistic and elite is actually only in the sensor capabilities of the subs. In elite, the submarine you're driving has its sensors neutered, and the su en en enemy submarines have their sensors boosted. So go, we get all the uh, the sonars up now, oh they have the, the active ping on the torpedoes active anyway, um, and yeah you don't want to have, be playing a Russian submarine and have its sensors neutered any more than they need to, or there are, the um, <laughs> the American submarines have theirs boosted, there's hard mode and then there's just plain giving the AI cheats. Alright, so what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to do a single wire hook shot, so we're going to drop a torpedo out, um, should we go more south? We should probably go straight south. Shh, damn it! Alright, that's not what I wanted. Please don't wire break. Alright, we've got a wire on that one. Alright, so now we're going to fire two torps. That first torp is, um, that's, that's a wasted torp. Hopefully there's no whales out there. Greenpeace will kill me. Anyways. We've got the torpedo clear of the submarine now. The whole point of firing south was to try not to break a wire, but hey. Um, so we're going to head the torpedo south along the line. The idea is to get the noisy torpedo as far away from our ship as we possibly can, or our boat as we possibly can, and then we are going to turn this one to the north, and we're going to see whether or not we can spook whatever's hiding out there in the big blue into dropping some countermeasures or doing something that's going to reveal itself. Hopefully we'll be able to get it with this torpedo just by guiding this one torp. But um, we may need to fire a second. But we are going to try and do this with, well, the one torp that we have control of since we've fired two. Now obviously I'm using a bit of time acceleration here. You can see that in the top right hand corner, a little hourglass. It's just to speed up the torpedo because I need to make it I need it to make a decent amount of movement here. Alright. There's a torpedo launch. Okay. Now we got a small um we got a small uh, launch transient then. Hopefully that torpedo is being fired at our torpedo and not at us, but we won't know until it gets within sensor range. And there's a countermeasures. Alright, so I pretty much guessed the location pretty well there based on that torp. But as you can see, we do not have... Oh, there we go, we do have a contact. Alright, so that contact in between us and where the torpedo is, that's actually a false contact. The contact is up near the countermeasure you can see on the map where our torpedo is. Where there's second noise maker. Alright. So yeah, Sierra 1 is actually up there. Now I'm manually controlling the torp here. Which way is it going to 
turn. It's either going to turn the left or right hand side of those countermeasures. Yeah, it's gets cut back. It's going the other side. It's going the other side. Where are you? So we're getting a better sense of threshold on at the moment, but you can see our range is messed up. We haven't got the range right on our sensors. Gun, fire control, there we go. Gun, sonar, noise maker, bearing, three, Sierra one eight. is. Still reading contact Sierra 1. We haven't got an identification on it yet. Ah, it's a Victor. Right, so I'm not manually controlling the torps here from the third person camera. I'm only going to control them from the main map. And looks like the Victor has managed to avoid that torp. And torpedo is not going to auto turn back fast enough, so it's going to loop. Enough. So I'm just speeding up the rotation of the torp here, just basically keeping it at a hard left turn. I'm going to manually avoid the countermeasure and reacquire. Alright, so hands off controls, we'll let the torpedo just do its thing again. Victor's got some torpedo beats. But she's near the surface, so she is running out of space a little here. Right, so I'm just going to do a manual turn back around Victor again and bring the torpedo in from behind once I've gotten out far enough to make a turn. Another countermeasure. This is not unrealistic, by the way. This is what wire guided torpedoes are capable of doing. And it looks like their torpedo was fired at ours, so our boat is safe. And impact on Victor. Sierra 1 is sunk. So, there you have it. It's actually pretty simple um, to be able to take out uh, really any difficulty level a submarine in cold waters. So, for those wondering how I do it in the, the comment section, it's kind of like playing chess. Uh, only you can't see the enemy's pieces. Actually, a better example would be, it's like playing Battleship. You get a bit of basic information to start with, the direction the target is roughly going to be in, and keep in mind that um, original piece of information is anywhere within probably 20 to 30 degrees of this heading. The target's going to be that, and the target is moving from the moment that the, the mission actually starts. And from there, it's just a matter of anticipating where you think the enemy is actually going to be. Speaking of which, uh, there it is there. So yeah, that's all there is to it. I might try and bring out some increasingly uh, more difficult submarines and see if I can take out some increasingly more powerful ones, just in some future videos. But uh, this should be good fun. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time, take care.